Hello investors, welcome back to your number one place for all your investing needs. Today we're going to be discussing how to invest your $1,200 stimulus check that you received from the government. Now I'm going to be splitting this up into eight different sectors with my stock picks. So this is uh, how I would invest it if I was splitting them all up. Now obviously this is not financial advice, so do your own research before you invest into the stock market. These are just stocks that I see doing well in the future based on my opinion. And these are stocks that I would buy if I was just beginning to invest into the stock market. Now before we start the video, let's see if you guys can uh, smash that like button for me and let's get over 100 likes on this video. Also, don't forget to uh, press that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications so you get notified every time I upload a new video so you can receive all of my content. Also, thank you guys for smashing that subscribe. We got over 6,000 subscribers already. This year is going to be a blast. Okay, so the first sector I would be looking at is going to be the industri industrial sector. So in the industrial sector, my first pick would be Boeing, ticker symbol BA. So currently Boeing is trading at $154. As you can see on Friday, the stock went up about $19.76 or about 14.7%. Uh, the reason for this increase is because Boeing announced that it will be reopening uh, two, I believe, two of their um, locations and also today... During the weekend, we did receive some information that Germany is ordering, I believe, around $3 billion worth of uh, fighter jets. So that's going to be another big thing that might raise this stock to go even higher. But as you guys can see, this was trading at around $340, went down to about $95, maybe a little bit lower, $89. And now it's uh, slowly coming back up. Now, Boeing did suspend their dividend currently, but that does not mean that in the future they will not, you know, reopen that up, which uh, I believe they will, obviously. But um. Boeing definitely has some growth potential. It's still down there. It's still been hit. You know, it's not recovering with the rest of the market. And uh, I think with that, once uh, the production starts booming, uh, that Boeing is going to continue to grow back up. And I see this one as being one of the, you know, the best picks to, in the industrial sector for right now, at least um, for, for growth. If you're looking for growth, because it has potential to grow back up to, you know, the 300 area, which is double, which is almost 100 percent gain right there. Uh, so we'll definitely uh, keep an eye on this one, but this is one I would definitely add. The second choice on my list is going to be uh, Lockheed Martin, LMT. So they were trading at around $436. Currently, they're trading at around $401. Um, another great stock, this is going to be our defense uh, sector, I guess you could say, but they're all um, connected in the industrial sector. So the um, if we look at their dividend, they have a dividend of 2.39%. Uh, their market cap is over $113.11 billion. Um, you know, P.E. ratio 16.71. Great stock to hold. Uh, if we look at their dividend, dividend score uh, $2.40. If we scroll down here for the four year average yield is about 2.41%. It stayed about consistent throughout the whole time or, you know, growing a little bit. If we look at their dividend growth, they have 17 years of growth. They've been consistently growing, obviously. Um, right here now they're trading at about or they're giving about nine dollars per share currently, which is huge, uh, you know, compared to other stocks. Now, if we look at their quarterly, they're paying a quarterly paying dividend of about two dollars and forty cents currently. So every quarter you're going to be receiving two dollars and forty cents, which adds up to that nine dollars. Um, you know, Lockheed Martin, great stock to hold defense sector. Uh, our defenses are always going to be booming. Um, it did take this huge dip down here, but that. That just, you know, came back up. Unlike Boeing, you know, Boeing is still down here where it was. So Boeing, in my you know opinion, has a very good potential to come back and fill that gap up. And that's why these two are going to be in my uh, industrial sector. These are my top picks for that sector. The second sector we're going to be looking at is going to be the finance sector. So obviously with the eight different sectors, what I would do personally, if I was the one investing, I would uh, split it up into eight, you know, sections. So take that 1200 and split it up into eight. However you want, you can do, you know, 10% in one and 20% another one, just split it up. Or you can just do evenly divide 1200 by, uh, you know, eight different sectors and then just invest into the stocks in there personally. So for our finance sector, the first stock we're going to be looking at is going to be Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC. Um, you know, finance uh, sector just had earnings last week. A lot of these stocks had earnings and the finance sector was getting destroyed the past week. So it was uh, starting up up here about $24, went all the way down to about $21 and it's kind of uh, rising back up. But if we look at the six month, it was trading at $35 almost, went down all the way to the you know low teens, so about $18. And now it's uh, building back up. It was up about 8.7% on, on Friday, but that's thanks to the market. The market was up about 700 points as well. So this one has a P.E. ratio of 14.63. Their dividend yield is 3% with a market cap of $201.97 billion. Uh, next up after this, we're going to have J.P. Morgan Chase. This is going to be our second pick for the finance sector. J.P. Morgan Chase, you know, up 9% on Friday as well. 
Uh, this stock was trading at a high of around $140 per share. It dipped down to about 79 and then it's recovering. As we can see, same thing in the last five days, it was trading down, then it recovered a little bit on Friday. That's mainly what all the finance stocks did as the bank reported earnings and a lot of them either missed or they had to pull their guidance for the rest of the year. P.E. ratio of 17.27, dividend rate $3.60 or 3.78% with a nice market cap of $289.92 billion. Obviously, these two are my uh, favorite stocks actually in the finance sector, and that's why I picked these two. And I also see a lot of growth potential for both of these companies, no matter what happens. And, um, you know, I feel like they would always stay up um, and, and just a good investment overall. Next up, the third sector we have is going to be the energy sector. So there are two companies in this sector that I personally will believe that will survive this whole thing going on, you know, especially with the oil prices dropping. Uh, these are the two companies that I believe that will come out, you know, on top, even with all this going on in the long term. A lot of companies might not make it, but these two are definitely ones that I believe will. And the first one is going to be Chevron Corporation, ticker symbol CVX. So they were up about 9% on Friday as well. As you can see, a lot of the stocks were up on Friday because we had a very, very nice day in the market. I believe the market was up close to 3% on Friday. But this stock was trading at a high of actually $127, as you can see, went down to a low of $51. Right here, it was about $54, $51. And it's been uh, having a nice you know, growth potential, and it's been growing back. It's up to about $87.17 right now. Uh, if we look at their dividend yield, it's a 5.92%. That's a very, very high dividend yield uh, if they can continue to pay that out with a market cap of $162.74 billion. Uh, Chevron, I don't think they're going anywhere. And then after Chevron, the next one we have is going to be X Exxon Mobil. So this one, ticker symbol XOM, this is the second one that I believe, even with all this you know stuff going with oil, I believe this one will definitely survive. It was trading at a high of about $83, so it's about half of that right now. It was at a low of $31 down here. That's that's crazy to think about. It went up about 10% on Friday, so it got out of those 30s and came into the 40s again. Uh, P.E. ratio is super low, 12.87. Uh, their dividend yield is 8.05%. That is a super high dividend um, yield with a dividend rate of $3.48, market cap of $182.84 billion. Now, obviously, um, you know, with the $1,200 invested from your stimulus check, these are stocks that I will be holding for growth and for dividends. So obviously, these ones with the higher dividends, you, you would receive more dividends. Plus, as the stocks grow and the prices grow of these stocks, you would receive growth on top of that. So you would get a combination of growth and dividend. And that would mean that you could uh, drip that money back into your portfolio and buy more of these companies for the long run. The fourth uh, sector on our list is going to be the information tech sector. Uh, most of you guys know is that a tech sector, not information technology. But uh, so Microsoft, Microsoft is going to be picking this one. And that is going to be actually the only one that I'm going to pick in this sector. There's many of them that I could, that I could pick. But since the tech sector did not get hit as hard as some of the other sectors, they've been able to recover really quickly. But the reason I'm picking Microsoft is because I believe that Microsoft still has a lot of potential, even with their recovery like that. Um, obviously, there are other stocks that you could definitely add in here, like AMD would be one of them, or NVIDIA. NVIDIA is definitely another great one. Qualcomm, you know, Qual Communication, they're, they're a great company as well. Uh, there's many, you know, many of them that you could add to this one. But since the tech sector didn't get hit as hard as the other sectors, I'm just going to pick Microsoft, obviously. You know, you're doing your own research, you're doing your own investments, so you could definitely switch out Microsoft with another stock. But Microsoft is trading at $178.60. It was up about almost a percent on Friday. It was trading up at a high of about $190 up here, went down to a low of about $120, $130 right there. Their PE ratio is 31.88. Uh, their dividend yield is 1.14% or $2.04 yearly with a market cap of $1.36 trillion. So you guys know the four, big four, MAGA as you could say, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon. Those are the four big ones with the market cap over $1 trillion. Uh, which one is going to reach $2 trillion first? Who knows? I mean, companies are booming right now and Amazon's doing really well as well. So... Yeah, definitely. Um, this is a nice one with a market cap of $1.36 trillion. Next up, we have the communication sector, communi communication services. So obviously in this one, I have many choices and I picked four. Um, I, I like a lot of stocks in this sector, actually, and they have a lot of potential. So I picked four. Now, these are either like streaming services that they have. They have, uh, you know, uh, 5G battles coming up, you know, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T with the 5G. We have Comcast, obviously, and Disney with uh uh, streaming services, Peacock, and then Disney Plus. 
uh, just many different things. So those are my four choices that you guys are going to be seeing. The first one, obviously, Walt Disney, ticker symbol DIS, currently trading at $106.63. Uh, with the parks being closed, you know, with the virus going on, this stock was trading at $141 up here in February, went all the way down to a low of about 85. It's slowly recovering, but until these parks start opening it up, this one's not going to, you know, rise that quick. Uh, P.E. ratio 33, dividend yield of 1.65% with a market cap of $192.51 billion. You know, Disney still has Disney Plus coming out with a lot of revenue, but the thing is, you know, sports are not being played, so they're not making money off of, you know, that revenue. Sports are not being streamed. Um, they're not going to be making as much money as they should, but they still have Disney Plus, which is going to give them some money. But then again, these parks are closed, and that's going to hurt Disney a lot in the upcoming quarter. Next one on our list is going to be ticker symbol T, AT&T. This one obviously is doing amazing as well. They were trading at about $38.61, went down to a low of about $26.77. Currently trading at $31. It was up about 3.55% on Friday. Uh, their P.E. ratio is about 9.07, super low, with a uh, yield of 6.66%. Oh, we might want to stay away from that one, 666. Uh, market cap, $224 billion. Uh, very nice. I feel like AT&T has a very nice, bright future. So this one is definitely you know, another reason why I'm ha adding this one on there. Uh, after this, we have Comcast, ticker symbol CMCSA. They're currently trading at $38.08. They were up about half a percent on Friday. They were trading at around $46, went down to a low of about $32, and they're back to $38 now. Uh, P.E. ratio, 13.33. Dividend yield, 2.42%. Very nice. Market cap of $173.38 billion. Comcast obviously has Peacock coming out. I believe it's actually, uh, you know, it, it's set actually out for some of the Comcast customers right now. And then the rest of it is going to be um, delivered around July, I believe. It's going to be available to everybody. So that's actually a very positive thing for Comcast as they're going to be having a streaming service, which can uh, bring them even more revenue and more profits. Next after that, we have ticker symbol VZ, which is Verizon Communications. So Verizon, obviously, with the 5G, same as AT&T and Comcast, a uh, huge battle. They're all already almost recovered to where they were. They were trading at about $60, $62, went down to a low about $49, $50. Now they're back at $58 already. They already recovered very quickly, but I see very big potential with this one. P.E. ratio about almost 12, dividend yield 4.21% with a market cap of $242.02 billion. Obviously, obviously, the um, you know communication sector, these four stocks I see having very, very nice growth in the next couple of years. I believe that five years from now, these stocks are going to be booming for sure. Uh, you know, Disney has a very nice gap to fill as it dropped a lot because of the parks. AT&T has very nice uh, growth potential, Comcast and Verizon as well. And that's why I picked these four for my communication. All right, guys, next up, we have the real estate sector. So in the real estate sector, uh, I only have one pick, and that pick is going to be Realty Income, tick ticker symbol O. I've talked about this stock so much that I'm not going to you know, talk about it too much, but you guys know this is a REIT. Obviously, they have to pay out around 85, 90% of their, um, you know, earnings or their revenue back out as dividends. That's why they have very high dividends. This stock was trading at around $82, you know, a little bit higher up here, $84, $85. Went down to a low about $42, low 40s, um, high 30s. Currently, it's trading at $52.37. Five, it went up 5% on Friday. Uh, P.E. ratio, or actually dividend yield, dividend yield uh, of 5.34%. With a market cap of 18 billion, um, obviously this is one is uh, it's kind of a risky one because if the if the housing sector starts falling and and these things don't start opening up, obviously because of uh, the virus going on, as if things aren't opening up, these companies are not going to be earning money, and that's why they're dropping right now. So they need this they need the economy to open back up in order to uh, make money because they're renting out these malls and shopping centers and things like that out to um, you know these customers and they need the market to be open they need the economy to be open back up but realty income one of my favorite reads to hold in the portfolio and that's why I added this one in there next up we have the healthcare sector and our first pick in the healthcare sector is going to be Johnson & Johnson ticker symbol JNJ so they're currently trading at $152 they were trading at about $152 a high it went down to about $111, and now it's recovering. It had that V recovery already, so it's already recovered back to where it was. But Johnson & Johnson is definitely fighting to um, you know, try to provide a vaccine for us, and, and they've had, they just had earnings actually this past week that happened. So earnings just happened, and the stock went from about $139 to about $152 uh, right there in the past couple of days since the 13th. 
So Johnson & Johnson, the healthcare sector is booming right now. I believe they have a lot of potential, especially with this you know, pandemic that's going on right now. P.E. ratio of almost 20. Dividend rate $4.04. Yield is 2.66% with a market cap just over $400 billion. Uh, Johnson & Johnson has very good potential, and I believe by the end of the year, this one is going to be outgrowing itself and be uh, very high. Next up after that, we have uh, United Healthcare. So UNH, ticker symbol UNH. So this one is trading at $290.56. Um, it went down actually about $8 on Friday, but this stock was trading at a high of about $305, $306 right there. It dipped down all the way down to $194. Obviously, with Bernie try was running in a, in a presidential race, um, these stocks fell down because he wanted to free healthcare for everybody. But now that he's out of the race, actually, that's going to help the healthcare sector as well. Um, this one actually made an all-time high on Thursday afternoon once uh, Guild announced that they had the vaccine that was working or some type of information that boosted the market. This actually went to about $310 after hours, but it's not recorded here because it happened after hours and it wasn't. It didn't open up at that price. But that's amazing. You know, United Healthcare was at an all-time high the other day, technically. Uh, dividend rate is 1.49%. Their uh, market cap is 275.28 billion. So Johnson and Johnson actually has a higher market cap, but United Healthcare is one of the biggest, you know, uh, healthcare companies in the United States. So definitely these two are my pick. All right. So the eighth sector is going to be the consumer sector. So I have three stocks in this one, and the first one is going to be Procter and Gamble. So ticker symbol PG. So obviously Procter and Gamble just had uh, earnings on Friday. Uh, they beat, you know, estimates, but they did not beat on revenue. They missed the revenue by a little bit. Uh, but I think that the next quarter is going to be a lot better since um, the virus kind of didn't affect it in too much in the beginning of the quarter. Obviously, they have, um, you know, st stuff like the toilet paper, obviously uh, Charmin. Um, you know, they have a lot of the cleaning products and stuff like that, deodorants. And then the company, I believe that is going to have really good earnings in the next quarter. Uh, you know, they missed by a little bit in the previous quarter, and that's why the stock didn't go as much. You know, it went up about $3 on Friday. I was, I actually had potential for this one to go about 130 on Friday, but since they missed on revenue, it did not go as far as I thought. But they're already almost at the all-time high. They're back to where it was, to about 200 or $125. They were down at a low, about $97. One thing about these these guys is they increased their dividend last uh, month, uh, last week, I believe. They uh, increased the dividend even with all this going on. That's very tough for companies to do, but they definitely increased the dividend actually, and that helped the stock you know rise up even more. As you can see, it was about $113. It just started trending back up because they did increase that dividend, and that's something that um, investors love to see when they're investing in a company. Their P/E ratio is about 25, with a dividend yield of 2.54%, market cap of 308.68 billion. The next one on our list is going to be ticker symbol KO, which is the Coca-Cola company. Obviously, Coca-Cola is not going anywhere. So this one, it was at a high of $60. Currently, it's about $48. Went down to a low of about $37.56. Um, Coca-Cola, I, I think, is going to come back. Just take, give it some time, and it'll be back up to these highs. Um, you know, Warren Buffett's favorite stock, in my opinion. P.E. ratio, 23 Dividend yield 3.41%. That's a super high dividend actually for Coca-Cola with a market cap of 206.34 billion. And then last but not least on our list is going to be ticker symbol WMT, which is Walmart. Walmart has earnings coming up soon actually, and they're currently trading at $132. Um, if you look at their six month, they were trading at about $119 down here. And they went down to a low about $304 and then just huge recovery. So in the past month, I mean, this stock has been booming, you know, coming from about $107 all the way up to $132. Um, this one actually is, you know, all-time highs. They're, they're reaching all-time highs. Walmart is busting out this production. They're busting out all these products. Everybody's going shopping, you know, gathering up all their stuff. So Walmart is a huge stock to own right now. I actually added a bunch more shares to my portfolio personally because I believe this one is going to be booming for the next couple of months. Um, P.E. ratio 25, dividend yield is about 1.63% with a market cap of $374.2 billion. And that's why I have, you know, Walmart on there. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this list. These are the stocks that I would pick if I was investing my $1,200 stimulus check, which I definitely will be investing. And uh, I'm going to be investing in some of these stocks. So these are stocks that I picked. Obviously, do your own research before investing into the stock market. Pick your own stocks. Don't invest based on somebody else's opinion. 
Um, I hope you guys like these uh, stocks that I picked in the sectors. Leave a comment below. What stocks would you buy if you were investing into the stock market with your stimulus check? Make sure you smash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out my other content. I'll see you guys next time.